Hi everyone, this is Jake, an application engineer for Tektronix at Keithley. Today we'll be continuing our Keithley Kickstart tutorial and we'll be going over a little more of the advanced functions and some of the way you can display your settings, your table, and your graph. To start, we're going to look at the different ways you can tile your, your instrument windows. Here you'll see we have a power supply, an IV characterizer, and a data logger app all in the same queue. This way you can configure settings on all these different apps. But if you wanted to see them all together, one option would be to maximize one of the windows. And you can then see the other two tiled over here just on one screen. This allows you to configure the settings of one instrument, but then the other two you can still see their measurements or, or monitor what they're doing. You can also use this icon here to float the instrument out. And this could then be moved throughout the screen onto a different screen and then you can just dock it right back in with your other instruments. Another uh, helpful feature when we're looking at the power supply app here, you can see that currently in use is my simulated version of our 2281S power supply. Uh, obviously I want to connect the actual power supply I'll be using. So if you come down to the bottom right of this window, click on the instruments button, these little arrows here to replace the instrument, and then we can select our actual unit you'll see that we've switched in use to our connected instrument and we can go ahead and delete the simulated instrument this is useful if you're configuring your test away from your lab and you don't have the instrument with you you can develop it with a simulated instrument that's in an identical setup you can create your test save your project and then swap in your actually connected instrument when you're in your lab or near the instrument itself so we're gonna look here I've just got our power supply connected it's gonna run five volts and an amp if we look here at our SMU, I've got a 2461 connected, running a standard voltage sweep, 1 to 5 volts. And then what we're really going to monitor here is our data logger. I've got a DAQ6510 with 7708 card. I have uh, a resistance measurement on channel 112, a temperature measurement on channel 113, and a DC voltage measurement on channel 114. This voltage measurement is actually just going to be monitoring our, our 2461's voltage. And you can see down here I've just got a, a scan count of 5 and it will start immediately. Some of the great features the, of the instrument, for example, might be if we're looking at the power supply, whether in this smaller window or full screen, I can turn the output on and off individually. and You can see it's running here. The same with the SMU. If I blow it up here, I can use this button down here, the Run App button, which will run just this single app, the IV Characterizer. And here you can see we're running a quick... Uh, voltage sweep. But what's even more important is that when I have all these apps built in together, I can press this run all apps in the project button. This means all the apps that are in use, I can click this and it will start my scan on my data logger. It'll activate the output on my power supply and it ran my SMU voltage test. And so here we can see I turned off the output on my power supply and we'll be able to take a look at some of our other features here. On our data logger, you can see here we're just on our settings tab, but I can also use our table view. Within the table view, I'm able to see the names for our channels. With these little drop down arrows, I can rename the channel. If I wanted this not to be res, but actually spell out resistance or, or some particular device, I can change the name there. Here, I have my time option. I can either change it to absolute time, relative time, or relative time with date, hour, minute, second. And I can hide that column entirely if I'm not interested. I can do that on any of these, including my resistance readings, my temperature. It will all depend on the test that you're running. And down here at the bottom, you can see different statistics, your min, max, your mean, your standard deviation for all your different uh, column settings here. And while you're running your test, we'll see it. Uh, we'll run a longer active test on uh, our data logger in a moment here. But you'll be able to see that we can both scroll through data using the scroll bar and our auto scroll. And I'll show you use of that in a moment here. Uh, over on our graph tab, we can take a look. It's got all of our different values, and it shows in our in our uh, table over here that resistance is our blue line, temperature is the red, and our SMU voltage is the green. Although in here we can change the color to whatever we'd like, we can disregard resistance or add it back in, and we can change all those functions around. 
here we can use this zoom function to select a window and move in a little closer and the auto scale we can pop back out to full uh, to the full size here on the Y you can see we can change all of our settings and the way that we view it we can auto scale this we can change our maximum and minimum if we're interested in just a certain band and we can change our scale from linear and logarithmic we can also by hovering over the x-axis change down here our minimum maximum in our uh, setting there we can auto scale and change linear and logarithmic but we can also change our x value to be by default time but I could plot versus resistance temperature or the smooth voltage this will give you a lot of different options and if we take a look over in our SMU when we go to our graph it is the same configuration and same setup over here you'll be able to change these uh, y-axis values and then down on the X you can then also change between time smooth voltage and smooth current and then you can change your y-axis accordingly so this gives you multiple views we're gonna go back to our data logger app here and I'm gonna run a slightly longer test let's do a hundred scans just to to make sure it's long enough If I hit the run button here and I go to the table you can see that we're just pumping out data and it's it's logging it all I can then use my my bar here to scroll about and look at specific data and you'll see here that I can auto scroll and it will then follow the scan all the way down and run along with it as it continues to run on the graph here we can hover over each point and see what these data points are we can right click and we can place a cursor and this will give us an identifier of uh, each each point in time and on our x-axis and we can see what these values are across all our different graphs this is available in all the the graph settings and if we look here in our SMU I'm gonna open this up to a larger and run a second one and so now we have a second test now we'll be going into our run history a bit. You can see here I've run four tests with this SMU. We can go in and we can select different runs. It'll give us the different data that we're looking at. Here we can enter a run description. So you, know, you can say SMU run. This can help you identify if it's got any kind of special characteristics, leave you any kind of notes. You can also control click on different runs and this will select multiple runs to display, show you different data, and line them up on top of each other. That way you can compare the runs right here on the screen. You can then also, if run one had different settings than run two, you can select back to run one, go back into your settings, and then run another test with those same settings uh, that's where some of those notes can be helpful where you're able to compare those runs and compare those settings and the different runs that you have and, and it allows you to change your settings much more quickly than having to reconfigure them every single time. If you prefer to retest run 1 settings and you're on run 10, you can do run 11 on the same settings as your first. We're also going to take a look at our export settings. So that's this icon down here. If you click here, you'll get our export menu you can choose to export the table or to disable that and you can choose the CSV or XLSX format uh, you can exclude hidden data or include it and you can add your test configuration so you have all your information available here you can choose the graph to be exported or not uh, whichever color theme that you're running your um, kickstart in you can then export the graph in either dark or light theme this gives you either a black background or a white background and that's your preference and you can also modify the resolution to fit your needs you can select or deselect grid lines and this here will give you uh, an example of what you're you're going to export down here if you select automatically export new runs before you run your test uh, so this is something when you first open your your project you're going to want to go in and, and click this checkbox and every time you run it will automatically export all of your new runs in that data into uh, a file in your kickstart folder and this will allow you to uh, save every run without having to go in and select it yourself. Here you can update your path. 
to where you actually want to save it. By default, it's going to be under your Kickstart projects and uh, in your documents. And then you can change the file name. By default, it's going to be the app name, the run, and then the time. But you can change that to anything you like. And then down here, you can choose to export just the selected runs or to export all the runs. So another option we're going to take a look at here is uh, I have shelved an instrument. You can click down here. It's just basically it's one of the instruments you have hooked up. If you don't want to see it in your queue and you don't want it to clutter up your instruments panel, you can shelve the instruments. Here you can then unshelve the instrument. This can uh, run up to between two and eight apps in the multi-view uh, functionality here. So you'll be able to run up to eight different apps with eight different instruments at one time in Kickstart currently. Uh, right now I'm going to hook up our 6517B and I'm going to open it up in the DMM app. I'm going to maximize our 6517 or 6514 and we're going to take a look at some of the new functionality which is in this DMM app with this electrometer we can choose the charge function. I'm going to use the automatic settings. We can hit run and as you can see it's going to take a moment and we're starting to take data and then here in the graph you can highlight over different points you can identify them to track the the values we can place a cursor and here I'd like to auto scale the full set and now you can see different values that you have set as cursors. When you right click you can also save this as an image if you don't want to uh, wait for the export if you need the data immediately and you can remove the cursor or drag and drop it. This way you can select different points and determine the charge density which is a nice new feature in the current version that I'm running Kickstart 2.1.1 build 476. This may vary depending on which version of Kickstart you're using, but we're going to keep the general functionality the same across all the platform. So here are some of the options for running your tests with multiple instruments, multiple windows, uh, working with your, your table and graph settings, uh, your run history and exports. Uh, Please stay tuned for any additional Kickstart videos that we'll be coming out with to help you run your tests and get more experience in our Kickstart software. Have a good day.